Well, the one thing you can usually count on after a big storm is a signal being on flash, like you'll see here today. All right. We've got go right to the conflict monitor. Right off the bat, looks like we've got a conflict. I'm sorry, no, we have a dual indication. Dual indication on low switch seven with the red, yellow, and green on. Low switch seven. Yep, right there. Uh, looks like the top indication is on which is the red all right so let's go in here to the controller I got stuff all over the place in here this cabinet needs to either updated or changed out all right so let's go to alarms check the controller alarms oh, back out of here system data alarms alarm report Let's see here, 924, that would have been, uh, let's see here, this morning, looks like we went into conflict flash at 812. All right, and there's 1120, that's me, status one, that's me opening the door. Ah. Other than that, what is the controller doing? The controller looks like it's running fine, or attempting to run. So the conflict monitor is the only thing that's keeping me from running the signal um, <clears throat> in its normal operation. So let's just reset the conflict monitor. And maybe this was just a, a storm that came through this morning, just kicked it out. And um, sometimes you have these little blips that happen and then just resetting it will take care of it. But let's, uh, let's do it when it's safe to do so. on phases four and eight right now. Okay. Never really a good time to do this. So let me, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the power to the controller. Let's turn that off. And there goes the controller fading off. Go ahead and reset the conflict monitor. We know that it was on load switch seven position. Okay, now we got a CVM because it's not seeing the controller at the moment. Let's go ahead and put this into the, and you know what, I'm gonna keep it in normal. I'll let it bring itself out. Control. Let's see if it kicks out here. The problem with coming out of flash and going to all red, people just still treat it as a flash of red. There must be a long delay before we kick out of them. There we go. Hey, our greens are coming up now for... Six is running. We're gonna run through this whole cycle in all directions just to make sure that it runs fine. Because you remember, load switch seven just happens to be phase seven. So we're waiting for phase seven to come up here, which is getting ready to right there uh, now. All right, let's see here. Seven. Four and seven, okay. That's running fine. Let's see over here. Seven's back to its red state. So the good news is we ran through that as a cycle. Well, we're running fine, but I've got a constant phase seven call right there on the green arrows there. My phase seven direction. Car coming through, but you see there's no one else. And I've got a constant call there. 
I go over to the, let's see here, let me back this thing out. Phase seven, that's my detector cable coming up to the detector box. And when it's faulting or flashing like that, it means we have the fault and it's constant calling. I can see out there already the problem though. Let's go uh, take a look at that over here. Yep, all new pavement through there. And when they put that in, we didn't put the new loops in yet. So let me next need to call into our guys and see if they have a contractor lined up to come out here and cut new loops. Because until we get new loops cut in, the old ones have been destroyed, making this box constantly flash like it. And when these boxes sense a fault, um, from the street, by design, they'll put a constant call into the direction that they're servicing. Okay, now I'm very confused because phase seven just dropped out and I should have had a constant call there. Still flashing. Oh, there we go. Disregard. I have a And you can see we have a constant call on phase seven. So that's gonna keep calling in until that new loop is installed and put into there and it will sense a good loop, meaning it will no longer constant call. So that's uh, something that you might experience as uh, drivers that wonder why you're getting a green signal for a direction when there's no one there. Well, there, there's an example right there. Damaged loop, the detector box, detector boxes by design will put a constant call into the controller which it is there and it's going to put a call in there regardless if there's a vehicle there or not so that's uh something for you guys to be aware of and now you know why that happens all right so i went ahead and called into our office and this is an ongoing project we are going to have contractors come out and cut those loops here real soon I would make timing changes uh, to make it more driver friendly, but since they're almost here, um, I think this week to cut in the loops, I'm going to let it be uh, that way when the new loops are installed and they put everything back the way it was, all the timing is set up as it should be. So I'm going to let this just ride. Signal's running again. Yes, we have that left turn that comes up, but like I said, you would rather have the green arrow come up and service a vehicle. Um, as if they weren't, were or were not there. I mean, as if they were there, I should say. I was starting to ramble on there. Um, anyway, um, that wraps up this project. This was a short one today, but I like when it's short. I don't like long <laughs> things that make my brain hurt. So um, hope that was informative. I'll see you guys next week.